Well, hello out there. Welcome to Knife Chats. Um, going to do some rambling again tonight. I don't know where this is going to go or how it's going to turn out. Um, but I'm live and so let's see what happens. Um, first thing I want to talk about is uh, uh, the upcoming giveaway. There will be an upcoming giveaway. And uh, as I mentioned before, well, I can already take all these coins and I can just put them in the jar now. Because um, <laughs> the uh, the thing about uh, the uh, the GI box or or uh, what do they call it subscription boxes was a killer. I just took in all sorts of things with that. And then the thing on uh, uh, the my top five traditionals was a killer also. So there goes all the coins. But let's talk about the important thing. There is a giveaway coming up on my channel. It'll be after the new year begins. And like I mentioned, it's going to be for this knife here. It's going to be for a Case Sidebuster Jr. Someone's going to win this thing. Um, just came in the mail today. That's why I'm doing the video today. But someone is going to win this uh, Case Sidebuster Jr. I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit, it looks like. Uh, I've been sitting on a shelf for a while somewhere. Uh, so Sidebuster Jr., someone's going to win that. Uh, like I said, sometime uh, in January or so, probably. Uh, and I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do it, but I will eventually be announcing this giveaway in a video. And by then, I'll have an idea exactly how I'm going to do it. I have a feeling I will announce it at the beginning of January and then give it away at the end of January. I'm still working on exactly how I plan on doing that. But this is the one you will be getting. A Case Sodbuster Jr., uh, stainless steel, um, black Delrin handles. Now, um, next thing I want to mention. Um, if you haven't checked out Slick Slicers, please check out Slick Slicers. He is right on the verge of hitting 500. He plans on doing a giveaway after he hits 500. I'm sure he's going to hit it, but uh, head over there. And um, if you haven't subscribed to him, check his channel out if you like it. Go ahead and give him a subscription, and uh, I'm, I got a feeling you will like it. If you're a person who likes uh, small knives, or if you live in a restricted area where you're really stuck with just uh, carrying a small knife, you know, something with a blade length of three inches or less, Slick Slicers is really a great place to go to because uh, that's really what uh, he covers. Uh, not only traditional knives, but also some modern folders that are under that um, that three inch length in the in the blade length. So, uh, and while he is stationed in the UK and he does talk about uh, the knives that are legal in the UK, many of the knives that he's talking about are also the kind of knives that you have to carry in the big cities in the uh, United States and in other countries too. So. Um, if you haven't checked him out, if you're not a subscriber to Slick Slicers, um, go over to his channel. Take a uh, take a, a a peek at it. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and subscribe to him. I don't think you'll be sorry if you do. Something else um, I want to talk about real quick. These things. The Rough Rider. Not the knives. The box. Uh, in future giveaways, I'm telling you what. Uh, if I'm giving away a Rough Rider knife and it comes in one of these big boxes, chances are you're not going to get the box because it costs as much to ship the box as it does the knife. These things are ginormous and they are heavy. Um, I could ship the the knife and a second knife um, for the same price as shipping one knife and this box. That's how heavy these boxes are especially if I'm sending it overseas or something. So um, there's a good chance that in future giveaways, of if I'm doing Rough Riders, you may not get the box if it's one of these big honking boxes. I have a very much a love-hate relationship with these boxes. They look great. They are great for presentation. They're great for gifts and stuff. But they are just big. They take up a lot of space, and they are heavy, and they cost a lot of money to ship. Uh, I wish uh, SMKW would go or Rough Rider would go back to making uh, boxes that fit the knives instead of a one size fits all magnetic box with all this foam in the inside. Look great, but man, are they heavy. 
Um, speaking of which, the knife that came in that box is this one. This one I got. I just picked it up. Uh, this is the second cotton sampler I've picked up. Uh, this is the one um, with the black uh, smooth bone. Uh, and you notice it's green and black. Uh, it kind of matches pretty good. Uh, the back side is a little muted, especially right down the middle. I picked this one up primarily because of the double R shield. This is the only knife in all of Rough Rider land that has that shield, and I don't know if they'll ever use it again. Um, has the black titanium coated blade, and uh, I only have one other uh, cotton sampler, um, which was the first one that Rough Rider came out with, which was the Appaloosa bone. And I noticed something different about them besides the uh, the black coating on the blade. Notice the uh, the nail nick. Originally, the nail nick was up here in the swedge uh, on the titanium coated one. The nail nick now runs along the edge of the swedge, so they moved the nail nick, and I do like that a little bit better. Um, I'm still not exactly sure what I'm ever going to do with a cotton sampler, but it was just a cool looking knife, so I had to pick up one. And that um, is what's really leading me into the uh, next portion of this, which is going to run on for a little while. And that is just trying to look at uh, popular um, uh, traditional pattern knives. And what I think are the ones that are probably the most popular traditional pattern knives uh, among collectors to date. <clears throat> and if you notice, you don't see a scout knife in there or a large toothpick. So I won't be talking about those tonight because, quite frankly, uh, as anyone who collects knives know, they're probably not the most popular around out there. Uh, matter of fact, uh, right now, cotton samplers are probably more popular than a scout knife right now. Uh, and I think that might be because uh, of the uniqueness of them and, uh, you know, a little bit of a fad potential. Um, I don't know how long they're going to stick around, but uh, right now Rough Rider has made like nine of them, uh, seven in the large and two in the small. I don't know if anyone else is making them, but uh, I wouldn't doubt if uh, if uh, these continue to sell well in the Rough Rider line, you'll see them somewhere else. I think Great Eastern made one in the past. Um, before I actually get into the patterns, though, it seems to me, what year did Rough Rider come out with the black bone cotton? Uh, I, it's been around for about two or three years, I believe. Um, what's the, um, the pattern number is RR1726, so I would say sometime between, um, uh, 2016 and 2018 that knife came out it is still whoops I keep hitting things the knife is definitely still available it's available at uh, SMKW I picked this one up on um, on eBay for about the same price as what you would get it on um, on SMKW I, I do like it uh, 440 stainless steel uh, black titanium coating on the blade um, now what I was going to be talking about is, I think it is a great knife, uh, Todd. Sorry, I'm having a discussion with other people. Um, what I was going to talk about is what I think is the blade of the year. Before I start talking about traditional patterns, uh, I want to talk about the blade of the year. And I think the blade of the year is going to have to be the Warren Cliff. Um, it's been popular for a while, but it's it's popping up everywhere now as both a primary blade and a secondary blade. It's it, you're seeing it on modern folders, some kind of modified Warren Cliff, uh, and you're seeing it on the traditional pattern knives. And this is just the blade. Everyone is screaming about it. Everyone seems to love the Warren Cliff blade. Um, I have my thoughts on it. I do think it's a really great uh, blade uh, it's um, it's been around for a while hi Rhino 4054 uh, it has been around for a while uh, it has been around for a long while but it has definitely come back with a vengeance recently and it seems like this is definitely the blade of 2019 the Warren Cliff blade um, the only thing that even uh, comes close to uh, catching up 
with the Warncliffe blade is all the cleavers you see out there. You know what I mean? You see the cleaver blades out there too, but uh, they're not nearly as popular as the Warncliffe blade. Uh, so to me, the blade of the year for 2019 is the Warncliffe blade. And uh, I got a feeling if a lot of people are showing their, their top five knives, top 10 knives uh, for 2019, I, I will not be able to do that. I can't even remember which knives I picked up in 2019 uh, to try and come up with um, five of my favorite from the year. But I do know that even uh, when people are looking at their top fives and stuff, you're going to see a Warncliffe blade probably in one of those knives. It, it just seems to be popping up all over the place. And there's no doubt the one I'm holding in my hand right here, um, this one, the... Uh, the Micarta Work Knife by uh, Rough Rider. This one made a big splash in 2019. There's no doubt about it. Everyone uh, seems to have done a review on it. Everyone is talking about it. Even people who were complaining about the workmanship on the knife were saying it was a great knife because of how low the price was. So um, something to think about. And so uh, Swayback Single Bladed Knives really popular, especially with a Warncliffe blade. Uh, the other blade that is very popular in Europe, more so than in the United States, is right here, some kind of ram's foot blade. It seems like everywhere I'm seeing knives uh, out of Europe, uh, people are doing videos on knives in Europe. Um, this is the blade they, they talk about, the sheep foot blade. It shows up on all sorts of knives that they just seem to love. Uh, it's not as big a blade in the United States as it is in Europe, especially in Great Britain and stuff. And I know that's because these were on rope knives and stuff. And, uh, you know, so seafaring knives had the sheep foot blade or a ram's foot blade or a lamb's foot blade. And so I'm sure that's part of why it's so popular in the UK. But it's, uh, it is definitely picking up here in the... Um, in the Americas too. More often than not though, um, you see the, um, instead of uh, the sheep foot blade, it seems like the popular one here is the hawkbill. The hawkbill seems to be a little more popular in America than the sheep foot blade. So, and the difference is you've got the curved bottom, which is harder to sharpen as opposed to the sheep foot or the uh, worn cliff which both have that straight edge on the bottom, which is a whole lot easier to uh, uh, sharpen. And uh, so to me, I, I kind of like the, the sheep foot better than the, uh, than the hawkbill. And uh, hawkbills are also one of those patterns that are real popular in America. Speaking of which, I'm gonna try and go through the knives in front of you and, and tell you which ones I think are probably the hottest knives for uh, 2019 uh, and some of it is going to be what are just basically in general the most popular knives uh, in America or possibly in Europe and uh, number one is going to be the trapper um, regardless of my feelings on it there is no doubt about it um, it is cases number one selling pattern it is also probably the number one selling pattern in Rough Rider lines and in all those frost lines, Kissing Crane, and every other uh, traditional pattern knife out there, maybe even Boker. The, the Trapper is probably the knife that is the number one selling knife um, among traditional patterns uh, for a number of reasons. And I'm talking specifically about the standard Trapper, four and an eighth inches long with the clip blade and the long sheep foot blade. Uh, every jackknife in the world right now is seems to be coming out being listed as a trapper. Uh, some of them are built on the frame that is traditionally known as a trapper frame. Uh, some of them are just a knife that happens to have a clip blade and a sheep foot blade and they call it a trapper. And other knives are not even remotely on this frame or with a spay blade. I think I said sheep foot before I meant spay. But there, there are trappers now that don't have a spade blade and are not even built on this frame, but they're still calling it a trapper. So, But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about specifically this knife, the 4 and 8 inch standard trapper. It's been number one for a long time, and I think it still remains number one um, in, uh, in the sales department. 
Now, number two, in my book, it's probably the five inch lockback, um, better known as the Buck 110. I do not have a Buck 110. Uh, between these two, if uh, between a Buck 110 or a Case Trapper, I will buy a Buck 110 before I'm going to buy the Case Trapper. I know eventually I will have a Case Trapper, though. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So Trapper fans, don't don't yell at me. I'm not trying to bu uh, bust on Trappers. Like I said, they are the number one pattern. Uh, but the Buck 110 rivals that in popularity, or I should say the five-inch lockback rivals the Trapper. Um, and it's primarily because of the Buck 110. Um, it is definitely uh, Buck's number one folding knife, the 110. Uh, it's been around forever. Everyone loves a five inch lockback. The only problem with the uh, five inch lockbacks, and I'm talking about the ones that look like this with the three and seven eighths inch blade. This one is by Bear MGC. Uh, the first five inch lockback, lockback I ever bought. The only real problem uh, that stops people from probably buying more uh, uh, five inch lockbacks is just the sheer size of it because it is not a pocket friendly carry. Uh, most people end up carrying it on a belt with a, uh, with a sheath, uh, which means city carry becomes kind of iffy because everyone in the world sees that you have the Buck 110 on you or some kind of large knife on you. Uh, and that's frowned upon in large cities and stuff. Whereas the trapper is much easier in the pocket, so a lot of people will carry a trapper instead of a buck 110. Uh, so those two knives, I think, uh, remain uh, number one and two in popularity, at least in the Americas. Uh, I think the next knife I'm going to talk about is probably more popular in Europe. And that is this one right here the side buster or the work knife or the farmer's knife, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I'm not going to be specific on size here. It could be, uh, you know, the uh, standard one that's about four and a half inches long, or it could be the three and a quarter inch or three and a half inch long ones. You know, the, the side buster junior, like what I'm giving away. Um, that's one of the reasons I thought about doing this video is because, uh, these knives, um, the, the farmer knife, the sod buster, the uh, mule skin, or whatever you want to call it, uh, the, regardless of the size, between four and a half down to three and a half inches long, these single bladed knives are just a great utilitarian knife that fits the pocket so well. You know, and you got a nice straight blade, and they're just popular worldwide. I don't think they're as popular in the United States as they are in Europe uh, and in other countries, but they definitely seem to sell better than a trapper overseas. And that's something that uh, if American knife makers are looking at uh, expanding and trying to increase sales overseas, they should probably be looking closer to something like the sod buster pattern because those are the ones that I think are more popular overseas than either of the uh, either the trapper or the uh, uh, or the five inch lockback. And these are also very popular in the United States. One of the big selling points is they're less expensive than either of these two and they're easy to come by and this one especially the smaller side busters just fit the pocket real well um next knife um i think uh this was the year of the barlow for uh for case and so a lot of people started making barlows again uh barlow's been around for a long time uh but I don't think the Barlow caught up in popularity as as quite as uh, high as what you see in the Stockman. I think the Stockman is still number number two in the case lineup, maybe uh, even surpassing the Sodbuster, even though Stockman's cost more. Um, and uh, they come in a variety of patterns. Uh, do I have another one here? Probably don't. Probably threw it downstairs. Um, yeah, that'll teach me. Any case, uh, I've got right here the the sow belly, which it seems to be the most popular of the uh, of the stockmans 
at the moment. I think the medium stockman overall tends to be more popular, but the three and three quarter inch uh, sow belly is they're probably the reigning king in um, stockmans, at least in the United States right now. And that's why it has its own name. You got the long clip blade, nice sheep foot blade for a secondary, and then a, a spade blade. Uh, this is an older one, the Corn Cob Jib Moonshiner by Rough Rider. Uh, one of my favorites. Also, one of the first uh, sow bellies I ever picked up. One of the first uh, sod bus, uh, one of the first stockmans I also picked up by Rough Rider. Uh, really good knife. You're not going to find it anymore. They'll never make it again. But they make plenty of other uh, sow bellies. And uh, the big one right now is the one in the Micarta. Um, which is selling like hotcakes. Uh, and they came out with it, you know, one of the first knives in that series. And I think they did that simply because uh, sow bellies are selling really well right now. And so that's kind of like number four on the list. You've got the uh, the Trapper, the, uh, the five inch lockback, the sod busters than the Stockman's, in, in particular the Sal Belly. Then you probably come up with the uh, the uh, case, the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Barlow. I think this comes in around number five, the Barlow. And part of that is because it is such a classic pattern. A lot of people liked Barlow's even before Case pulled it out of their vault. But because you got to understand it was in the case vault, so it doesn't sell as well as things like the Trapper, the uh, the the Sodbuster, and the Stockman's. If it did, it wouldn't be in the case vault. Um, other companies, the 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 budget companies such as Rough Rider and uh, uh, Steel Warrior and several other companies do make Barlow's, but you don't see them making them as much. Uh, matter of fact. Uh, the uh, Brown Stagbone just came out with the Barlow this year. Uh, the Brown Stagbone in Rough Rider has been around for several years. They just now got around to uh, bringing out the uh, the Barlow in, um, in the Brown Stagbone. And I don't think they would have done that if Case had not released the Barlow from the vault. It would probably not have come out this year. So we can thank Case and their vault program for uh, getting a lot of people or a lot of Barlows out in the economy lines this year because they followed suit, basically. Um, this is one of the, my, I, I do like this one. What I always like about the Barlows is the fact that you have something on the bolster and nothing in the bone. That's the way I prefer them. I know some people uh, do not do it that way. Um, yeah, it would be nice if they would do a single blade uh, Barlow, if Rough Rider would. They seem to only do that in the Big Daddy Barlow. And you notice I don't have the Big Daddy Barlows out here or the Granddaddy Barlows. Those are the ones that are about five and a half inches long. Um, the reason I don't have one out is because uh, I don't think they sell nearly as well as the... Uh, the, the standard size three and a half, three and five eighths inch Barlows. Uh, I love the large Barlows, but again, they're not pocket friendly and they are not something that you can easily carry anywhere. Uh, and that's a, I think the, that's why you only see one really big knife here and that's the five inch uh, lockback. Um, most knives, in order for them to sell well, they need to be down in that uh, three to four inch range. If they're more than three or four inches, um, they they have a harder time selling. And I think part of the reason is is legality. A lot of people are buying knives live in cities where you really cannot go around carrying a knife with a four or five inch blade. Uh, so you're stuck with a knife that's smaller than that with a four inch handle and a three inch blade. That tends to be what you end up seeing a lot of times. Um, speaking of which, um, I think the canoe is still holding strong. I, I think it's up there around number six or seven in the popularity poll. Um, and it, uh, it's one of the knives that I, uh, Case has in his lineup all the time. So it must sell pretty decently. And it is also a knife that, uh, when Rough Rider and, um, and, um, 
Frost and other companies, when they come out with a series, the knives you typically see in that series, uh, three or four knives that you tend to always see in that series right away are the Trapper, the uh, some kind of Stockman, the Canoe, and then um, something else like a Congress or uh, something else. I don't have a Congress up here. I don't think they're selling as well this year as they did in the past. That's why I did not break it out. But uh, the, these canoes, uh, especially recently, matter of fact, on a couple of the uh, Rough Rider patterns, the canoe was the first knife that they popped out, which is kind of odd. Usually the trapper is the first to, that shows up, but um, canoes tend to be uh, a popular knife, which is interesting because uh, it is a pattern that Case came out with, and it sat dormant forever because it just would not sell. It started selling again sometime in the 70s or 80s. And and then uh, basically when uh, Frost and Parker started making knives overseas, I think they helped popularize the uh, canoe. And, uh, and then Case jumped on that and started making the canoe again. And that's why it remains popular today. So canoes are one of those knives that is pretty popular these days. Another knife that is extremely popular but hard to get um, is the Whittler. Now, I have a Seahorse Whittler here. That's one of the knives that um, you don't see a lot of because it is a Case brand. And uh, Case... Uh, uh, doesn't always uh, put out the uh, Seahorse Whittler every year, but they do come out with Whittlers every year, and so do other companies. Uh, cigar Whittlers and so on and so forth are very big. Usually if a, if a series is out there, there's usually a Whittler in the series. That was the other one I was trying to think of. You always seem to have your Trapper, your Stockman, a Whittler, a Canoe, and then something else, you know, uh, Maybe another Stockman, uh, a Barlow, something, but uh, or a Congress, but uh, a Whittler is always seems seems to be included in a series uh, because it is a uh, just a fairly popular uh, brand. Now the Seahorse Whittler is one of my favorite, and it is uh, it is also one that's very much a favorite among uh, Whittler fans, uh, and it, it is you know. It's just a gorgeous knife, and it has the most popular blade of 2019 on it, which is the Warncliffe blade, um, and it's always come with a Warncliffe blade. You have other sleeve board Whittlers out there, but usually they don't have the Warncliffe blade. That is what makes the Seahorse Whittler the Seahorse Whittler, and it is also one of the knives that consistently remain popular, even if it is hard uh, to get a hold of. This is there is in a... Uh, saw cut bone, uh, the case saw cut bone from a few years back. I'm going to move on to uh, small patterns, the real small patterns. And, uh, and this is the one that really boggles my mind. Uh, two patterns in the, uh, the, in the small knives always consistently sell well. Uh, one of them is the tiny toothpick. Uh, according to Case, at one time, this was their number one seller in tiny knives and small knives, the tiny toothpick or the three-inch toothpick, outpacing even the peanut. Uh, typically, it's these two knives that tend to be the number one and two in small knives in selling. The, 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 uh, this tiny toothpick, people collect the tiny toothpicks like crazy, and one of the reasons they do is because of their size and, and because of their unique shape. Um, it's interesting. A, the larger toothpicks are much more functional than the smaller toothpicks. But because these are basically jewelry size, they can fit in your uh, watch fob pocket. Um, no one feels threatened by them. They're great for doing your little string work and everything else. I've done a video on, on just how efficient you can actually use a tiny toothpick. So they are not a bad knife to carry. But, um, you know, it's also not a knife that... I plan on ever collecting. I don't know why, considering my love of toothpicks. Um, 
I think the peanut is a much more functional knife, two and seven eighths inches versus three, two blades with a much more substantial clip blade. Notice it's a little shorter, but larger and uh, thicker, or got more belly on it, I should say. Uh, but you also have a secondary pin blade on it. So you've got two blades instead of one. Still a very small knife that can easily fit in your little watch fob pocket or your fifth pocket. Uh, disappears in the pocket. You can carry it anywhere almost. Uh, well, short of all those places that say no knives allowed, period. But it seems like these two knives are, are running into a really big competition recently. And the knife that seems to be surpassing them in popularity right now is a knife that just baffles me to no end. And that is right here. The Little Lady Leg Knife. Three and a quarter inches long, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, about three and a quarter inches long. To be honest, it has a more functional clip blade than either of these other two knives. Look at how much more belly it has on it. It is kind of a powder horn. And you know that the uh, the shoe here acts as a cap lifter or bottle opener. So it's a very practical knife, I guess. But still, I just I don't get its popularity. Um, and I guess that's my fault. I've got like... Uh, I've got like two or three in this size, and I've got a couple of the large ones, the five inch ones. Uh, but this is a pattern that uh, a lot of people are really putting these out. Uh, Frost is making a lot of them and all sorts of things. Uh, I know uh, Rough Rider has them out there. Um, I think I've seen them in some of the other budget lines. I believe at one time Geck even made one of these, you know, Great Eastern Cutlery even made a shoe, uh, uh, a lady's knife at one time uh, a while back, a, a larger one than this. But it is uh, really selling like hotcakes among, uh, uh, among people. I don't get it. It's showing up in every pattern in Rough Rider line. So it's very popular and it has surpassed the knife that I think made a lot more sense and that's the uh the butter bean or the mini uh the uh mini canoe which you know has your also a fairly decent blade on it you know bigger than what you find on your uh on a peanut you know it's got more belly than on a peanut and uh, most people who know things about blades the uh a, a spear point blade is actually a little more functional than a clip blade for a lot of day-to-day uh, -day tasks. So uh, why the butter bean has like fallen out of favor for the lady's leg knife is kind of uh, frightening to me, but it does seem to be that way that these knives, um, the lady leg knife, uh, in the last couple of years, I'm seeing it everywhere, and it's uh, it's driving me nuts. But uh, I don't know. Uh, not my first choice in knives. I, I got this one, and I, and I got to tell you, I really do like the way this one looks. In, in the Stonework series, uh, they did a fantastic job with this knife, uh, the Lady Leg Knife. But I am never going to carry this thing. I just can't picture carrying it. Um, even though I see it as functional, I would rather use some other knife with, for my uh, bottle opener. Plus, I have a... Oh, this is close enough. Humor me for a second as I walk away from the channel. My keychain, I have a real bottle opener on it. I have had this bottle opener on it since... Um, 1980 when I was in the army. So that's my bottle opener, you know, and speaking of which over here I Talk about can openers on all sorts of camp knives and stuff. There's my can opener That's the one I have with me all the time my p38 that's been with me since <laughs> Before I even went into the army. So all the way back to 1976 
P38 and a real bottle opener is what it's on my keychain. So I don't need them on a knife. That's why I just don't know about the ladies leg knife uh, and why it is so popular. But to me, among the, uh, the small knives, especially in the economy crowd, the ladies leg knife has surpassed probably the peanut and the, the tiny toothpick. You just don't see them coming out in the lines as much as these two. And these two, I, th I thought they would never fade, especially the uh, tiny toothpick in popularity. But uh, ladies' legs knives are, are killing it right now in 2019. Hopefully the uh, these two will surpass and come back as well as this one here, which I think is really terrific. The butter bean, um, to me, the butter bean is the best two and three quarter inch long canoe uh, i like that better than the tiny toothpick or the peanut um, but uh, uh sadly in in small knives among these four it's it's down around four or even less um let's see anything else i want to talk about um as i wrap things up here um here's something i bought recently it's um, one of those uh, orange-handled parachute knives. It's not one with the switchblade, unfortunately, but it's, uh, it's a shroud cutter, basically. Um, one of those things that the Air Force uses for an emergency knife, so I had to pick up one of those. Um, I will, uh, I don't know, I'll have to do a video on that later on, but uh, one of the things I picked up, and another thing I picked up, remember I was talking about Everything and their mother being called a trapper. I got a trapper to show you. And you tell me this is a trapper. Uh, this is by Marbles. Came out a while ago. I will say that the frame kind of looks like a trapper. Has a little bit of that trapper look to it. But it doesn't have the bump there. It's just, it's almost shaped like a, a canoe frame. Except uh, it's smoother around. And the main blade, as you see is a spear point blade and then the secondary it has two secondaries on the back here and one of them is a screwdriver a wire stripper and a little bottle opener uh, and then the other blade is a small phillips screwdriver excuse me a small phillips screwdriver the handles on this are G10. Looks kind of like they're micarta, but it's G10. And if you can see the frame there, it says Marbles Workman. And this is a, what they called this was the Electrician Trapper. So you tell me, uh, Trapper fans, is this or is this not a Trapper? To me, it's kind of close to it, but it's really more of just an electrician knife. And I think it is perfect for an electrician. I like it. I, that's why I bought it. I just thought, man, this thing is cool. Um, I wish they were still making it, um, but it's not out there anymore. They, uh, and uh, that's one of the problems with Marbles. This is Marbles 265. Uh, this is out about eight or nine years ago. If you can see one, I tell you what, this thing is solid. It is really well made. Uh, it's got the 440A stainless steel, just like you're going to find in your Rough Riders. Um, see, it's got a full brass liners in between everything. And what I really liked about it was right there, you got that little Phillips screwdriver on the end there. Um, oh, I didn't even notice that. Notice that? Two and a half inch rule on the back of the blade. So that's kind of cool too. G10 handles, brass pins, brass liners. I'll do a full review on this later, but I saw this and I thought, man, I got to have this. I I saw it when it first came out and for some reason I didn't buy it. Uh, but uh, I was really glad that I saw it again. And the person was selling it dirt cheap, new, in the box. Uh, he was basically dumping it. I think I got it for like 12 bucks and that included the shipping. So uh, had to I had to just grab it. And... Uh, I love the G10 on there. See how that looks? Man, it just looks really nice. Uh, 
just a fantastic knife. So I thought I'd show that. I'll be talking about it more, like I said, in the future. Um, do I have anything else I wanted to show? Uh, oh, no, I said no toothpick, so I won't be showing that. Oh, uh, one of the knives I forgot to talk about earlier when I was talking about uh, patterns that people really love. This would probably be number eight, the, uh, the copper head. Now, this, this was an interesting one, and I think a lot of people have seen it. It is uh, by Frost. It's in their Steel Warrior line. But you can see the copperhead portion there. And this is the one that has that locking blade that is controlled by the secondary blade, which is kind of cool. And I thought that was going to be a problem when you're working with it, you know, that you'd be pushing on that blade and, uh, and it would close up. But it really is out of the way when you're holding it in your hand. So kind of a cool little knife. Um, I don't know if they, I, they still show up once in a while. And the secondary blade on it, guess what? Warncliffe. Like I said, 2019, definitely the year of the Warncliffe. Any case, uh, that was another knife I, I pulled out as a knife that a lot of people seem to love, copperheads. Uh, this is a very small copperhead, but a lot of people love the copperhead. Uh, anything else I could really talk about? No, not really. I, I think I'm going to wrap it up now. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. I will uh, be back probably in a week or so for another live chat. I do have something coming out on Wednesday, and I will also have something out this weekend, Saturday or Sunday. I don't know what day. And one more time, please, please, please go over and check out Slick Slicer's channel. If you like what you see, subscribe to his channel. He is... Uh, He's right on the cusp of hitting 500 uh, subscribers. I would love to put him over that cusp. He was looking at doing a giveaway once that, once that happens. Um, so please take a look at his channel and, um, and see what you think about it. And if you like what you see, subscribe to him. Um, I think he does a, a great job, and I think you will enjoy the, the show you get over there. Uh, with that said going to call it a night and uh, let you all go. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it.